Chapter 17, Yanni Valley Science and Letters Academy. It has been 42 school days since our last prank. After the fire, Bertrand Barkin got a new nickname. The students of Yanni Valley Science and Letters Academy were divided into two groups. Most thought Barkin had heroically extinguished the blaze single-handedly. Some believed, but could not prove, that he set the fire himself. It didn't matter what side you were on. Now pretty much everyone called Barkin Principal Invincible. Don't call him that, said Holly. She was sitting behind the table of cakes. Cupcakes, carrot cakes, coffee cakes, and tea cakes. Pound cakes, bunt cakes, crumb cakes, and sponge cakes. Angel food cakes, devil's food cakes, strawberry shortcakes, and pineapple upside down cakes. Red velvet, tres leches, whoopie pies. It was a bake sale. <laughs> to Holly's right was a metal cash box. To her left was an open book of poetry. One that was not assigned schoolwork. She read from the book when the bake sale was slow. Stuart was at the front of the line. Scotty was right behind him, impatiently eyeing the flan. Miles and Niles were off to the table's side, hanging out with Holly, which was something they often did at lunch. When things got busy, they offered help Holly didn't need. Otherwise, they sat there while she read. Don't call him what? said Stuart. Principal Invincible. But everyone calls him that. I don't, said Holly. Neither do I, said Niles. Me neither, said Miles. Why not, said Stuart. It rhymes. Holly shook her head. Nobody is invincible. What if he is, though, Stuart said. Like once I played this video game, and you had to fight this one boss, and he was invincible. What if Principal Barkin is like that? What video games, Miles asked. Oh, man, said Stuart. I can't remember, but the boss was so scary. It was this giant spider that was covered in armor, and your arrows couldn't piece, pierce the armor, and it released tiny spiders from its mouth. It was nuts, so... Miles bit into a Madeline. Did the spider have eyes? It had so many eyes. Did the eyes flash? Yeah, right before it spat, the tiny spiders. You have to shoot the eyes when they flash. Uh, Stuart pounded, pounded his forehead. I didn't even try that. Did the eyes flash? Yeah, right before it spat, 
the tiny spiders. You have to shoot the eyes when they flash. Uh, Stuart pounded, pounded his forehead. I didn't even try that. See, said Holly, nobody's invincible. I guess. Stuart's right, though, Niles said. I am surprised Principal Barkin hasn't canceled the dance. Polly shut her book, allowing Niles to glimpse the cover. The cover. Collected poems of Emily Dickinson. Think about it, guys, said Holly. The dance is a tradition. Barkin's great-grandfather held the first dance in 1894, and there's been one every year since. Miles and Niles nodded. Holly grinned. Everyone has a weakness. And what's Barkin's weakness? Tradition. Family. Honor. All that. So I'm going to exploit that weakness. And this school's going to get to do something fun. Sort of fun, said Stuart. What? said Holly. I mean, nobody loves the dance. The student-parent dinner dance was typically the last popular event hosted by the student council. That's because it was a dance with parents. Also, the dinner was bad. It was always the same, soft spaghetti. But it wasn't truly that nobody loved the dance. The parents loved it. Why are you still here, Stuart? Can I get my money back? This cupcake is really dry. Hey, I made that cupcake, Mom said. Stuart looked at Mom's. Well, it's dry. No refunds, said Holly. You can exchange it for anything in this section. Stuart grabbed a strudel and left. What does he know, Holly said. Totally, said Miles. Like Stuart suddenly, Dr. Cupcake. And we're supposed to just trust him on how dry stuff is? No, thank you. I meant about the dance, said Holly. For Holly, throwing the dance had become enormously important. It was the only extracurricular event left on the school calendar. The student-parent dinner dance was an affront to power, a glimmer in the dark an arrow in the spider's eye. Josh, clad in a khaki cap, and now's a sash, cut the line. Hey, said Scotty, no cuts. Josh pointed at his sash, at the sash. School helper, I don't have to follow the rules. Actually, said Niles, the school helper's job is to make sure the rules are always followed. It's important to lead by example, so you should probably shut up, Nimbus, said Josh. I'm not here to talk to you, or this Nimbus, or this Nimbus. I'm not here to talk. I'm here to pick up this money. Josh reached for the cash box. Holly slammed down the lid and left her hand on top of it. What? She asked. The money, Nimbus. This is a student council fundraiser, which means this is student council money, and you're not on student council. I'm commandeering the cash, Nimbus. The money is being redirected.